Now at 5.30 on WKYT This Morning, a Lexington family was shaken after their home was hit by a car overnight. What police believe caused the crash just ahead. Also on WKYT This Morning, Lexington police say a man is facing charges following an overnight crash that damaged several businesses. And former Governor Steve Bashir goes on the attack after Governor Matt Bevan accused him of wrongdoing. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. Some rain and fog and That's rumbles it. of thunder out there <laughs> bright and early on your Thursday morning. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain. Yeah, when you head out the door, you'll notice there is some fog out there on the roadways. You're going to have to keep a yes. watch on that, and certainly the visibility is reduced. And meteorologist Micah Harris is tracking things. Uh, are the storms pretty strong or not? Yeah, they're pretty strong. There's a couple of cells that I'm really watching right now. One in Boyle County going into northern Lincoln County. If you're sitting in Stanford, heads up. Another Another 15, 10 to 15 minutes. If you're not seeing rain already, another 10 to 15 minutes, and you're going to see the bulk of this roll on through. That's going to be right there on Stanford across 150, and also make your way that intersection 150 and 27. Lancaster still getting some heavy rain. You have plenty more to go. Perryville is now ending for you, but there on Twitter, have Pam Wright said it sure is booming here in Perryville, and it just keeps on coming right outside my window. But let me tell you, we're going to be seeing a lot of this as we go throughout the next several hours. And, and, and there's still a, a few more cells down toward northern Clay County, heading off into northern Leslie and also northern Perry County here any moment. I'm going to talk about these storms. If we see any severe weather for today, I'm going to have all that coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, we'll see you in just a bit. We thank you. The news this hour, frightening moments for a Lexington family. Police say they were sleeping when a car crashed into their home early this morning. It happened at the corner of Weaver Way and Wyndham Hills Drive just before 1 o'clock. Now, while the family wasn't injured, police say the two people responsible took off. WKYT's Caitlin Sintner joins us now live with the details. Caitlin? Good morning, Michelle. It's not what they had expected. Family heard a loud noise and then they ran out to discover this had happened to their home. Now, Monte LaFrana, who lives in the home, frightened when she was in her bedroom last night and she heard a loud noise. She ran into the kitchen and she says she saw her refrigerator in the middle of the floor. Today, she still doesn't know who caused the large hole in her kitchen. Authorities were at the home on Weber Way, just off Clay's Mill, near the Jessamine County line, for a couple of hours after they say two teens left the road and crashed. But the suspects, they believe our boys aren't anywhere to be found. Police say they ran. They say the car, the driven, the car driven wasn't stolen, but the owner isn't answering. According to a woman living in the home, her house wasn't the only thing they hit. Came flying through the through the yard. They hit, I guess they hit the house and then hit the, the fence and then hit my car. As far as the family living in the home, they are okay. We're told they're home right now. Live in Fayette County, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Thank you, Caitlin. New this morning, Lexington police say several businesses were damaged by a suspected drunk driver overnight. Police say the driver took off a utility pole, causing a power outage at Harrodsburg Road at Lane Allen around 2.30 this morning. He also crashed into a small strip mall at that intersection. Three businesses have some moderate damage. Police say the driver was cited for DUI and was taken to the hospital for his injuries. Fire officials say a large fire has destroyed a well-known business in Powell County. It happened yesterday at a historic building on Main Street in Stanton. Firefighters say the building was home to just plain fancy boutique along with two apartments. Four people were inside when the building went up in flames. We're told they all made it out safely. Crews say a man next door discovered the fire. He said his initial reaction was to start banging on all of the doors to alert anybody who might be inside. Trying to just make sure everybody got out because the smoke was pouring out pretty heavy. Firefighters say nobody injured uh, is injured as a result of putting out the fire. They do believe the fire was caused by some kind of electrical malfunction. A University of Kentucky fraternity has been suspended for five years for hazing. A complaint filed against Phi Kappa Psi claimed the fraternity forced students to drink alcohol until they threw up, then exercise next to it. It also claims students suffered sleep deprivation and humiliation. UK leaders say the fraternity has cooperated with their investigation, and the university says members of the fraternity have to clear out of the fraternity house in the next few weeks. But UK leaders wouldn't comment on any punishment for certain students. 
Governor Matt Bevin struck down parts of the state budget and six other bills yesterday that were passed on the last day of this year's legislative session. He waited as long as he could to do those vetoes, and while some of the vetoes are drawing some criticism, Kentucky lawmakers gave up their right to override the vetoes because they waited until April 15th, the very last day of the session, to approve the legislation. WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk with a breakdown. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. Governor Matt Bevin reportedly vetoed more than 30 items from the state budget. The impact from the executive action will be felt strongest by students. Bevin cut funding that would have allowed more children in poverty to qualify for preschool, and high school graduates will no longer have free community college tuition this year. Aside from the budget, Bevin used his veto pen on six other bills. According to the Courier Journal, Bevin vetoed funding for a number of preventative health measures, including cancer screenings and cancer research. Bevin also vetoed a bill that would have required the state to update driver's licenses to meet federal security standards. Bevin initially supported the new driver's licenses, but he says he changed his mind when he saw that the bill was drawing tremendous opposition. Now the governor's vetoes are drawing a large amount of criticism. After Bevin vetoed parts of the budget, the House Speaker called this a sad and unfortunate day for all of Kentucky, saying no forward-thinking governor would have acted this way. Bevin, in turn, says he issued those vetoes because the state has to cut back on its spending. From the Live Desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. And former Governor Steve Bashir is firing back at Governor Bevin, who has accused Bashir of wrongdoing during his time in office. Last week, Governor Bevin said he had hired a private law firm to investigate the Bashir administration. During a news conference yesterday in Frankfurt, Bashir said the governor has declared war on his family. He also claimed that Governor Bevin bullied some Democratic legislators into switching parties and is unethically raising money to cover campaign debt. Matt Bevin does, doesn't give me any choice because he started this food fight that he enjoys instead of governing. Bashir also released his income tax returns from his final year in office. It shows he and his wife earned more than $350,000 in 2015 from salary, investments, rental income, and Social Security benefits. And he criticized Governor Bevin for not releasing his tax returns. Now, Governor Bevin is currently out of the country on an economic development trip, but in a statement, he said Bashir is just trying to protect what's left of his legacy and called all of his statements baseless accusations. Kentucky Republican Party leaders said the same. He could provide no, no examples, no evidence, no proof. Uh, this is purely a desperate man trying to cling to what is left of his public legacy. Okay. Republicans also criticized Bashir's decision to hold his news conference while Governor Bevin was out of state. Bashir said he didn't Amen. know the governor was traveling when he scheduled it. With billions of video views per day, Snapchat has quickly grown in popularity. But one of the app's filters has now landed the message and image sharing service in some legal trouble. Brooke Silva Brega explains. This image showing Crystal McGee bleeding from her forehead with the caption, Lucky to be alive, was posted to Snapchat moments after her car collided with an SUV. Attorneys for the crash victim are suing McGee and Snapchat, saying the 2015 incident wouldn't have happened had it not been for the app's speed filter, which records how fast a user is going and shares it with friends. Students at Georgia State know all about it. I've actually seen buddies do it while they ride their bike or driving or in the car. I don't think it's very safe, but unless you're not the one in the car that's driving. But 18 year old McGee was driving with three friends in the car along this stretch of highway outside Atlanta, where the speed limit is 45 miles per hour. In a lawsuit filed this week, attorneys say McGee was going 107 miles an hour at the moment of the crash, leaving the other driver with permanent brain damage. She shouldn't have been texting and driving. On the feature, it says, please don't text and drive. Lawyers argue the filter encourages dangerous driving. Snapchat points out it comes with an on-screen warning, writing, no snap is more important than someone's safety. We actively discourage our community from using the speed filter while driving. Brooke Silva Braga for CBS News, New York. Now, CBS tried to reach Crystal McGee and her parents for a statement, but have not heard back. The driver involved in the accident is seeking damages to pay for his medical bills. Time this morning is 5.38 on WKYT, and a Harlan County couple is facing charges after police say their five-year-old grandson walked away from their home with a bottle of pills. 
Loyal police say the child had a bottle of melatonin, which is commonly used for sleep support. They say the child showed up at a nearby home, and the people there took him to the police department. There was supposed to be 120 pills in that bottle. When we done the pill count, there was 117. The child had told them that he had took one, that his granny had given him one to help him take a nap. Police arrested the grandparents, Fred and Shelly Jones. They are charged with wanton endangerment and endangering the welfare of a minor. Police say the couple had been caring for the boy. Ford has announced it is recalling more than 200,000 vehicles. The company wants to fix a transmission issue. Ford leaders say automatic transmissions in those vehicles can suddenly downshift to first gear. That recall covers the 2011 and 2012 F-150 and the 2012 Expedition, as well as Mustang and Lincoln Navigators. Ford says the problem has not caused any injuries, at least at this point. Well, to check traffic for you this morning, our time is 5.39, and we'll see what's going on out there. Here's a wide look at the region right now. I don't know if uh, we have an indication of this uh, report that we had of an accident on, uh, uh, near the exit 87 in Richmond that uh, apparently they're clearing at this time. Uh, but uh, as we look down there, uh, no delays indicated, so that's good. Uh, we do have that rain out there this morning, and uh, we're going to be watching that throughout the day. It's a challenge as you travel, yes, and the fog. And the fog. It's definitely a challenge. When I was on Winchester, the road, the fog became thicker, so you just have to be careful out there. Reducing some visibility. Here's a look at uh, I-75 and the Clays Ferry Bridge. You can see it is a rain slick this morning, and the uh, same thing on up at Athens Boonesboro, as well as Man of War and uh, Winchester Road, exit 110 this morning. Uh, so if you're traveling out there, just know that uh, you have a, a few things to deal with this morning. Maybe give yourself a little extra time as you're uh, getting ready. A lot more news coming up on your Thursday morning. So good to have you with us. Hey, that weekend is, you know, it's, it's on the way, it's right? almost here, right? Yeah. Still to come, a fiery plane crash is caught on camera and the pilot walks away nearly unscathed. The must-see footage when we come back. Wow, that's pretty good footage right there. Here's what's not good. We still have those thunderstorms out and about, especially just south of Lexington, heading off toward Madison County, and then some down toward the southeast. I'm going to talk about that, a brief break from the rain, and then more storms later on this weekend. I'll have that coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We have the showers and thunderstorms out there early this morning. Some of these storms are pretty strong. I mean, you're really getting a lot of heavy rain, also a lot of lightning within these two. Let me go ahead and zoom in and show you where I'm looking first. And that's going to be down towards Stanford, right as you move right along 27 and also 150, the interchange there, downtown Stanford, Lancaster. Uh, boy, that is some heavy rain. And it's now moving through, trying to push through Gary County, northern portions of Lincoln County. Good news here. We're not seeing any severe weather, but I will tell you this, if there is going to be a severe storm, it's going to be this one right here as it travels through Lancaster and Gary County and also Paint Lake. Make your way back toward Richmond and Berea. Uh, now starting to get some rain, but the heaviest portion is still back toward your west, heading your direction. So just keep in mind that if you're sitting in Richmond, Waco, Berea, uh, don't forget high, uh, at mile marker 87, that's going to be just south there of Richmond and, uh, or just right in the southern portion of Richmond, that is. Uh, we We've had an accident there on 75, along with this heavy rain and also some lightning. It's going to be absolute trouble, a mess trying to get through that. We'll have updates on that in just a few minutes. But let's talk about these storms still going on in east and southeastern Kentucky, just south of Campton. As you head down the Mountain Parkway, that's heading eastbound too. So southern portions, if you're working through that Wolf County area, heads up McGoffin County, you are next in line. More than likely. This will at least get close to Sagesville here in just about 45 minutes to about an hour. Jackson, it stays north of you, and also a heavy storm there uh, rolling through Buckhorn. And also, this should move north of Hazard. Nonetheless, Hazard, you'll still get some rain out of this. But the strongest portion of that cell is going to be mo moving north of you guys. Now, here's the deal. We have the rain on the roadways, but we also have fog to deal with. Where you're not seeing rain, you're going to have some very thick fog in some spots. And it's not widespread, but it is very patchy. You just got to keep that in mind. 7, 8 a.m., we still have a couple of rumbles of, th of th thunderstorms around. But watch this. It kind of fades away there by noontime. That doesn't mean we're over with. Look at the cloud deck back toward the west, and that'll spark up a few more showers, a few more rumbles of thunder. But obviously, this is no widespread activity like we've seen the past couple of days. This is going to be about a 40% chance of rain. Still, those thunderstorms will have a lot of that heat and energy to work off of. 
and also that moisture. It's putting down really heavy rain. And uh, I think my friends out of Boyle and also uh, sitting there in Gary County can attest to that. We head toward tomorrow morning. Check it out. We finally clear some things on out. So evening and night tonight, we clear it out. Friday morning looks good. Afternoon looks fantastic. This is your Keeneland Day. This is your Rolex uh, three-day event type of day out at, at the Kentucky Horse Park. Got a lot going on with big events happening, and Friday is your day to do it. We head towards your weekend. Your weekend just doesn't look all that great. So storms will continue. An awesome Friday, though, and then more storms there for the weekend as we travel towards your Saturday and Sunday. Both of those days sitting at 60 and 70% chance of rain. So check out your seven day forecast and what we can expect. A lot of us are going to be dealing with some of these uh, showers and thunderstorms. Like I said, if you're trying to plan out some plans and, and do some things outdoors, you'll want to do that on Friday. Not so much today because it's still spotty here and there, but Friday's a good day. Saturday and Sunday, not so much. Here comes some rain back in the forecast. And you know what? It's been increasing on that timing on Saturday, too. Three days ago, it looked like it was just going to be Sunday. But now it looks like it could be even Saturday morning to start to see some rain move on in, at least portions of our viewing area. All right. I'm hung up on the pretty Friday and the fact that you two good. match once again. Oh, once well, again. Well, once again, yeah, you go. Do. It's purple I don't know today. How it works. <laughs> I don't know how it looks it works. great. That's the way it goes. Well, it works out. It does uh, work out. Tomorrow's the last day for the Keeneland Spring Meet. You know, it's crazy. Just unbelievable. It's it just fly by. Really? Yeah, the you know, weather's going to be nice, too, right? Yeah, right. 548 is our time this morning. This video is what hurts people like me who have anxiety to fly. Incredible <laughs> surveillance video. It's capturing a small plane crashing into a tree in Alabama earlier this week. As you can see, this plane quickly burst into flames just oh as goodness. witnesses were rushing in to help. A nearby business owner's reaction to the crash was also caught on tape. Amazingly, the pilot escaped with only minor injuries to his hand. In the moment, he said he feared the worst, but he was just thankful that nobody else was injured. That so, is amazing. It really is. But there, we'll take, take a look at it once again. Um, yeah, there's the flames. So lucky he got out of there. Good to have you along on WKYT on this Thursday morning. Rainy it is out there. It is rainy. <laughs> Coming up, you'll get the stories that are making news at this hour. We're we'll checking traffic again, let you know what's going on out there. We have what's hot on the web and social media, and our top stories on the way on WKYT. Good morning. Great to have you with us on WKYT this morning. We have some fog, rumbles of thunder. Yes, yes. yes. But <laughs> so, you know, you have to look at it this way. Tomorrow is Friday. You got that yes. right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, just let that natural alarm clock go off this morning and uh, hop to it and uh, know the weekend's on the way. 5.52 right now. Let's take a look at some of the stories we're working on at this hour. Lexington police say two juveniles are going to be accused of crashing into a family's home overnight. It happened at the corner of Weber Way and Wyndham Hills Drive. Police say the crash has caused minor damage to the home. We're told that no one in the family was injured. That's good news. Several Lexington businesses were also damaged in an overnight crash. Police say a suspected drunk driver took out a utility pole at the corner of Harrodsburg Road in Lane Allen before crashing into a strip mall at that, at that intersection. A day after outlining his foreign policy vision, Donald Trump campaigns in California, the biggest prize of the presidential nominating contest. Yesterday, rival Ted Cruz named Carly Fiorina as his running mate in a bid to try to stop Trump's momentum. And Democratic candidate Bernie Sanders is also shifting his focus now to California's primary coming up on June 7th. Investigators are still trying to determine what led to the death of music icon Prince. Law enforcement sources are telling CBS News that prescription painkillers were found in the singer's possession and in his home. The 57-year-old legend was found unresponsive in an elevator at his suburban Minneapolis estate one week ago. A traumatic brain injury may impact a person's sleep a year and a half after the injury. That's the finding of a new long-term study in the journal Neurology. Researchers also say people with TBI don't seem to realize just how much their sleep is disturbed. And just seven procedures make up 80% of all emergency surgery admissions, deaths, and patient cost. That's according to researchers from Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. The procedures include gallbladder removal, appendectomy, and partial colon removal surgery.
Let's get a check this hour on today's traffic trouble spots with live drive traffic. All is looking good out there, but remember when you head out this morning, it is raining and there is some fog, so be careful as you head out the door. Time to check what's making news online with Bill. And wherever you are today, we're right there with the latest on WKYT.com. We're adding video now of the car that ran into that house in South Lexington overnight. Police still trying to figure out why it happened on that dark and rainy uh, situation going on out there. We have also uh, talked about the vetoes that Governor Bevin issued and how the legislature has no chance to override them because they've adjourned. The Constitution requires a governor to explain any vetoes. And on our website, you can see the actual veto messages from Bevan. And you can also read up the latest on the feud between Governor Bevan and former Governor Steve Bashir. Yesterday, Bashir called Bevan a bully, but said he won't bully him. Also trending this morning, former UK Wildcat basketball star Ed Davender on life support at UK Hospital after a heart attack. Friends and former Wildcats have been holding a vigil at his bedside. Davender played from 1984 to 1988, and he's ranked. Is Kentucky's 11th all time scorer. A feel good story from Kentucky.com is singer James Taylor was reunited this week with his old babysitter. Former Lexington Mayor Pam Miller was just 17 when she watched the Taylor kids during their summer vacations. Uh, Taylor and Miller hadn't seen each other in 42 years, so they had a lot of catching up to do. And CBS This Morning is coming up at 7 with your eye opener, and of course, we'll have local updates. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or Instagram and for the latest anytime, WKYT.com. We have those thunderstorms outside, very heavy rain in some spots. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Let me show you what I'm going to be looking at traveling right through Gary County. That is a strong cell right there. I will tell you this, it's not it's not fully faded away. Don't don't get me wrong, but it's fading where it has been the past couple of hours. So yeah, the lightning strikes are going down. That always is a good indicator of this kind of fading away, shrinking. That's good news. However, Berea, Richmond, yeah, we're running into uh, some pretty good sales right there as it travels on through. Richmond, more than likely, you'll get in the brunt of this. If it sticks together, the brunt of this here in just about 10 to 15 minutes, you're already hearing the lightning strikes there. Also, another storm there in Campton, and that's heading eastbound to Sayersville. You're next in line. Work your way southbound. Hazard, just north of you guys, that's the strongest cell at this moment in Perry County. All this is heading eastbound. There's not much back behind that. What we're going to be dealing with for today, thunderstorms this morning, a couple of rumbles later on this afternoon, especially for east of I-75 as that system tries to work its way on out of here. Look down toward London Corbin area, a little hint of some fog. I will tell you this, I was walking out my door early this morning, running into some thick fog. We'll talk all about that and those thunderstorms your weekend forecast coming up 